Hello, users, and welcome to the Rock X block number five featuring Mega Man X3. And this is being played on the Japanese PlayStation 1 version. You can see a reflection of my OBS there. And uh, the Japanese PlayStation 1 version is the fastest. And it's really cool. And it's got a color manual. So you can check out some pictures. One of these days I'm gonna do a series where it's just like me looking at game booklets. Like look at that. Look at that artwork. Also my fingernails might be a little dirty. Um I'm a little dirty. Yeah, I, I just really like colored uh manuals. I'm gonna do something with them. I'm gonna do like just an analysis on some of these things because they're just really cool and there's like a lot of like look at this stuff It's just really cool artwork that you would just never see otherwise like there's like There's literally there's human beings that spent like a fucking afternoon Compiling all these well probably a lot longer than that. I wonder how long manuals took to make Like the not like obviously the production process, but like just like planning each page, and then like I wonder like if they got cut. Ooh, look at this! Look at that! Look at that artwork showing the different abilities, like the custom drawings, like not just taking from the game, but having custom draw. It's just really cool. But yeah, and I have this little advertisement thing for the Mega Man X little trading cards that they have in Japan. They're really cool, and I'd like to get some. Um. But they're kind of expensive, so. But anyway, um, I'll skip the cutscene now. Got cutscenes waiting in Mega uh, in Mega Man X4, which should be fun. Whew. But yeah, so Mega Man X3. This is specifically Rockman X3. Um, in this one you can do L1 and L2, which is good. So I do L1, L2, and uh, let's just start it up. So for those of you that haven't seen me play this before, uh, I've got some stuff you might want to check out if uh, this is interesting to you. I did a whole week of the Double Dip Daily Show on, uh, on this. So if you want to see 10 more runs of this uh, relatively recently, then check out Double Dip Daily. I think it was week two that I did Mega Man X3 with. So. If you do like this run, which I do, I think it's a fun run. So if you do like this run as well, then of course check out uh, that. Pop the volume up a little bit. Hopefully this isn't too loud. Here's the thing, like I can always edit audio in post because I record audio tracks like that. But like, I never really want to do that because that's so much work. Because then I have to like extract the audio tracks and then like, ugh. So I hope this isn't too overpowering. Oh God, I love when you get to play a zero. It really is the coolest thing ever, and it's introduced in such a cool way. Like it's just like, oh, X is captured. Uh, and then like zero just comes. And it's just fucking awesome. And then that's it. I would have loved it if that was like a mechanic all throughout the- Let me see if I get the left wall. I did, yes. I would have loved it if like every stage, like something happens to X and then like zero comes out. But I, I feel like the whole zero implementation was so shoddy. They could have made it a really cool aspect of the game, but instead they just make him a swappable character that you can only choose once, and you need to choose once in a specific area to like get a secret. It's just lame in implementation. But that's just my opinion. Like it would have been cool if like, again, like halfway through a stage, like say X hits a dead end, and there's like a door, and then like zero, like teleports in and says like, oh, you know, like, 
stand right there, X, I'll go do this, and then you have like a little zero section, and then the zero music starts, and then like you hit the switch, and then the door opens. I feel like maybe that would have been too complex, but I don't know, it, it would have been cool. I can say that much. So coming up here is Bilzard Buffalo, everyone's favorite. And uh, so... Okay, so... Okay, so I'm just kidding. I die there on purpose. Um, I want to die twice before I do the Vile fight. Because I want to game over after I fight Vile. And the two fastest areas to die are right there at the start of this level. So that means if I die anywhere else, then the route's fucked. So this speedrun relies on me not dying. Well, I mean, obviously the speedrun relies on me not dying in the sense that if I die, then the speedrun's shit. Except for right there. But if I do die, then I game over, and then not only do I lose time from game overing in that death, but then I have to die two more times again to get back to zero lives. So, dying would be super problematic in this run, in the first half. Just gonna get health, because I'm a little cringe. Only a little, though. Eh. Only a little. Okay. Second try is the fry. And fries are pretty good. Especially chicken fries. Chicken fries are epic. I could go for some chicken fries right now. Anyone want fr uh, chicken fries? Wait. Frickin' chicken fries? I could go for some frick. <laughs> Alright, I'm done with that skit. Alright, so coming up is Bilzard Buffalo, which is a relatively easy boss for uh, X series standards. I don't know what you want me to say here. I'm just, I'm focusing on the game because it's so incredibly difficult. Yeah, so basically, if you're above eye level, like if X is above eye level, he'll always just go left for whatever reason. So you just jump and you don't need the air, ba like air dash hover, but you can use it to like just kind of extend your time and make it a little easier. But yeah, that's how that works. It's really fucking easy. Like, if you fuck it up, you're bad. And I'd be very disappointed. I fucked it up before. I've died on Bilzard Buffalo before. I've done a lot of stupid shit. I don't want to talk about it. But anyway, this is Neon Tiger. Which takes place in what I believe to be Brazil. If you're fast enough, only one of those, or one of those will despawn at the end. Alright, so this boss, you can kill. If you're good. But I'm not, so. Have to despawn those. Oh, I'm very bad. I'm not only, oh, not only am I not good, but I'm... Not only am I not good, but I am very bad. <laughs> that is pathetic. That is a pathetic display. Alright, so because this run has no chance of being good, let me just start explaining the actual way that the run functions. So in the PS1 version of this game, and every subsequent iteration of the PS1 version, so that's to say Mega Man X Collection, which includes the PS1 version instead of the Super Nintendo version, instead of being selectable, and not the Mega Man X Legacy Collection, because that chooses the Super Nintendo version and not the PS1 version, rather than making it selectable, which is my main gripe. They should have just included both. It's stupid. They should have included both in both remix versions, 
but they didn't. But in Mega Man X Collection in the Japanese PS1 version, there is a glitch where if you use left or right or any directional button and X on the same frame, that you'll actually be able to select the Sigma stages, or D Doppler stages, at any point. And the reason I do two of these guys and then kill Vile is because that lets you get the Zero Saber, which is really good for killing the last eight bosses in Sigma. So now you got the basic roundup. Now you know how the run's going down. Now all you gotta do is sit back and watch. I believe the last time I was in a uh, Brazilian Mega Man X universe, Lula was still in prison. So in case you didn't know, Lula is finally Livre. Good stuff. This boss can be kind of annoying, especially around now, because they'll have the rage mode like that. Which just wastes a fuckload amount of time. Okay, I got lucky. Cool. Only, only one of those little dashes, which is good. Sometimes this motherfucker will dash, like, you'll only be able to get, like, one hit in between dashes. But that guy went from, like, the meme dash to a regular attack, which allowed me to continue doing damage, which was, again, lucky. Also, at that stage was terrible. I lost 20 seconds. An ungodly and unreasonable amount of time lost. I must admit... I'm drinking what's mostly milk. I like mixing milk and coffee when I don't want to hyper-caffeinate, because I've already had a cup and a half of coffee, and um, I'm going to be staying up late tonight because I want to catch up on impeachment news, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to like have milk coffee uh, slowly over the course of the evening, a little slowly, uh, slow vehicle to caffeinate myself over a, a longer period of time, and it also tastes really good because it's milk. Honestly, I don't I don't drink enough milk. So I'm going to show you the glitch here. So I hold left. So the way it works is you can hold left and then hold X and then do the analog. Because this is a PS1 game being played on PS2, the analog button basically disables everything. So if you just hold if you turn the analog button on, um and no buttons will work. So you turn it on and then hold That was horrifying. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so you <laughs> you hold those two buttons and then click it again. I'll show it on the camera next time I do it. If you're playing on X Collection on PlayStation 2 or GameCube, it's going to be slightly more of a difficult process. You're going to have to actually hold them on the same frame. Which is uh, definitely tricky. Um, I used to run this category on the Mega Man X Collection version. Um, because I didn't have the Japanese PS1 version because it's actually really fucking expensive. It's like 40 or 50 bucks. So it took me a while to get that. Um, but yeah, I would always fail and then what we would do is we would call it the accidental rhinos because when you fail it, you go like, instead of like going to the, the Doppler stage, you'll go to whatever stage is next to it. And I would do it from uh, the left. So if I fucked it up, I would hit it from the right and then go to to tunnel Rhino and then have to like kill myself and then do the whole shindig again. But yeah, those were the times. I love thinking about all the stupid fucking nonsense I used to do in these games just because I didn't have the right version. I remember when uh, a speedrunner by the name of QTT6, whom I used to be decent friends with, apparently he's like some popular idol girl streamer now. I don't know what the whole thing that's going on with that. But um, he used to speedrun Mega Man X games, and he used to have the record for this game. And he played on emulator, and did, like, he would click out of the emulator so none of the buttons would work, and then did the same trick, but with clicking in and out of an emulator. And no one knew that, and he never told anyone that. And it wasn't until, like, years later... Those fists will kill you instantly, by the way. Well, they won't kill you instantly, but they will kill you. They grab you and then you die. Alright, good. Um, but it wasn't until like years later when Crack Attack, who currently has the world record, got the PS1 version and then figured out the, the little thing here. 
Um, and then QTT6 was like, oh yeah, I've always done that. Just with my emulator. And we were like... Because again, we would always do the tunnel rhinos on accident. And it was always good fun. That was really funny though. And of course, I immediately called to uh, strip him of all of his records for cheating. Ban every single run he's ever done. Of course, that's the only logical option. QTT6 also used to uh, chase the X6 record against me, but I won every single time. So much so that I got him to give up. Fucker. But then 8-Bit did the same thing to me, and then I gave up. So, it's okay. One of these days, though, I will get the X6 record again. It will just... It'll be a while. And I went from talking about X3 and cool game glitches and speedrun history to talking about X6. I just can't help myself. The game is just that fucking good. It really is just that fucking good. Alright, so we're fighting Vile now. Who every... I don't know if it's every level or just some levels, but they have these side areas that you can go to. And then once you've killed two or more Mavericks, Vile will be there. And once you kill Vile, um, like I said, it unlocks the ability to get a super secret epic weapon. So this is a fun little thing to do. Super easy. Then we can switch over to the Splasher. Okay. So if you get hit at the same time as you finish the fight, you can actually move during this explosion scene. I I was thinking of going for it, but I don't wanna I don't wanna fuck anything up, so I just took a little little safe method. Because the speedrun is, you know, unsalvageable as it is, so there's no point in even attempting to go like super cool duper, but at the risk of like, you know, dying or setting myself back. So I have to do this second hit there. And then I split when it's fully white. Alright, so I'm going to do the glitch again. So I'm going to showcase how this works. So I'm going to hit this. And then now I can hold the buttons. And then I hit it again. And then we go. So, there's your demonstration. And if you do Vile, then the stage is not broken down in tatters and destroyed. But if you don't do Vile, then the stage is. And then the bosses are different depending on that. So... So it could save around those guys. You can damage boost and go a little faster if you choose. But now we're going to go to zero. And this is how you select zero. And you can only select zero once, I'm pretty sure, at any point in the game. And then you just swap characters. Or you can do it here and then get a special cutscene for when you kill this boss. And that's what gets the zero saber for X. Again, very silly implementation. Downright shit, I would say. Like, uh, I went through such a... And they really... I, honestly, like, you go through such a trouble to implement the character, but just the implementation is so bad. And honestly, X4... Like, I, I like the way X4 does it with two different campaigns. I wish they were more different. I wish, like, maybe the levels were the same, but like you go through different pathways in some of them. Like I wish it weren't so samey, but and then X5 and X6, you can just swap freely and that's cooler. Like you can use any as much as you want, basically. I do like that, but I still wish that there were more areas that were. And then even X7, like even with the ability to swap the characters at any point, like, they never really do what I'm trying to, like, you know, explain here, where they just have, like, specific areas designed in... Oh, shit. In specific, uh, spots for specific characters. They kind of do it in the X7 intro stage, which I like. But other than that, not really. So you want to try to load these snails as early as possible. Get them moving. You can skip this section with very, very calculated 
damage boosts, where you take damage and then use the invincibility frames you get to like wall climb up the spikes. I've never done that, and it's hard. And the only reason I'd ever learn that is if I were going to go for like the world record or something. Which I could see myself doing at some point. But that point is nowhere near the current timeline. Gotta be very careful, because if you fall down, you just lose, like, a fucking half an hour. Like, the entire length of the speedrun, you just lose it all. Also, somehow I saved 11.2 seconds on Vile. I don't know what that's all about. That's interesting. Bringing it back. What if I PB'd out of this? I did 10 runs for the Double Dip Daily Week when I did that, and I didn't PB a single time. I think it was the only Double Dip Daily that I've done from now up, from then up until now, um, which is only the first 10 weeks of that uh, series. But I, uh, even with the demonstration, I, I wasted like three seconds on the little camera demonstration. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I didn't PB at all. Oh, wow, the perfect fall? Damn! I didn't skid against the wall at all? Wow. Okay, maybe this is the run. Maybe I just fucked myself on Bilzard Buffalo, so I wouldn't really, like, pay attention to the run itself throughout the entire thing. Maybe that's what just happened. Like, I just... I, I fucked up, and then I was like, okay, this run's over. Like, there's no point in try- like, there's no point in try-harding. And then I can let myself have a good explosive commentary sesh, and then also just get a PV. Which is, this is what this is, this. you know, this is pre-recorded. I'm just doing overlaid commentary. It was really hard to sync up the, the camera with the, um, demonstration. That was a little hard to do. I'm just kidding, this is, this is live gameplay, see? That was also really hard to sync up. I had to do that during the, the cutscene. Because, you know, there's no section where I'm jumping that many times, so you gotta be careful. <sighs> this guy you gotta be careful about. If you deal 51% damage on this guy, he becomes invulnerable for an obnoxious amount of time. So you gotta make sure the saber does always 50% damage. So you have to make sure that you don't accidentally shoot him with a lemon or anything obnoxious like that, because then you're in for a real fuck of a time. Trust me, a real fuck of a time. I would even go as far as to say a massive fuck of a time. I like Gravity Beetle, good boss. Oh, just kidding. Bad boss. Naughty, naughty! Good RNG there. Got a full heal without having to, like, worry about it. Troy's makes me happy. So you can spend a little bit more time to save the health, but eh, I decided to do that kind of method. Hopefully I don't wind up regretting that with the health machine. Which I might. I might wind up regretting that. Who knows? Oof. Toxic seahorse. Extremely toxic. No good. Very bad for you. The one thing about this game that I like, I like Mega Man games, you get a lot of break moments. You know, you have those massive explosions where, like, nothing happens. You know, you can wipe the sweat off of your hands. You know, you can prepare yourself. You can go like this. You know, you can go like that. You can go like this. You know, you can do all those, like, minor adjustments to your person to just increase your comfort level. 
So if you aren't careful, this guy can actually block your sabers. So you have to do it during a certain animations and certain attacks while things are mid-progress. Otherwise, this guy will just block your bitch ass. So I did that pretty well. This is a good boss rush. All things, like, you know, considered, this is a really good boss rush. Crush Crawfish is a little bit of an annoying fucker, though. Just kidding, apparently. Okay. I mean, what can I say? Other than... I'm just really good at video games? I mean, like, literally, what else is there to say? There's nothing else to say. Ugh. Alright. I'm curious to see what this split is. I don't remember how much time I can save on the boss rush. Apparently 16 seconds. So yeah, that wasn't that great, um, but it was good in the sense that I didn't take that much unnecessary damage. My Blast Hornet was a little slow though. That I can say. Oof, I fucked that up. I fucked that up. I fucked that up. I f Okay, well... It happens. It happens. What can I say? Other than... I don't know if that was audible. It wasn't insightful, so I'm not going to repeat myself. I do like Dr. Doppler's goatee, though. It's pretty cool. I have to admit. Gotta admit. Quick and dirty. Alright, so now the all, all that remains is Sigma. The big fucker. And again, um, for Mega Man X4, I'm going to be watching all the cutscenes. Um, I might do it in two parts, like I did with Mega Man uh, 8. I'm not sure. Um, really depends. I don't necessarily mind doing longer videos, but I think when I do them in parts, it kind of goes better with the attention span of the various audiences. By that, I mean my audience. I don't know. It'll probably end up being like an hour and a half total. So. I might cut it into pieces. I don't remember how long the cutscenes are. That's my thing with Mega Man X4. Is I remembered Mega Man 8's cutscenes being longer. But they really weren't that long. But I do think Mega Man X4's cutscenes are longer, and I'm pretty sure there's also more of them as well. So yeah, what happened there was I got hit by one of the floating mines, and I'm just going to blame RNG on that one. They kind of float around the screen randomly, so I'm just going to go ahead and blame RNG. And by that, I mean I came up with a better excuse. What I'm going to say is, the reason I did that was because I didn't get to properly explain Sigma 1, because I was talking about Mega Man X4, and I wanted a chance, I wanted to redo. You know, I figure, I should talk about Sigma 1, because he's cool. And he's got the shield, and you know, he's got the spike thingies, you know, it's just, cool boss. I just wanted to give a little shout out to Sigma 1. You're appreciated, bud. With an air dash, this guy's easy as shit. Without, you have to memorize a not necessarily obnoxious pattern, but semi-obnoxious pattern. There's some obnoxiousness, that's for sure. 
Or is it noxiousness? It's toxic. Like the seahorse. And uh, that's what we do with toxicnessness. We just murder them, watch them explode, and then kill their masters. That's actually really decent RNG. Alright, there you go. But the game's not over yet. It's not. And I've already used my Mandela Effect meme on Mega Man X2, so... You know, I kind of should have saved it for this one, to be honest. I really should have. It would have been funnier, I think. I don't know. It probably would have been funnier. For the rock block number six, I'll do that. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's Mega Man X3 for the PlayStation. Short, very sweet, very fun to watch, in my opinion. One of the coolest games in the series for the speedrun, at least, in my opinion. Goes X6, which is the best, and then X7, which is the second best, only because it's really funny. And then X3, which is the third best, because it's actually pretty damn fun. Um, but yeah, I have nothing else to say. That's it. I'm sure you've seen the credits. You've seen the cutscenes. You don't need to watch them. They're not that funny. They're not that interesting. They're not as cool as Mega Man X4. And, uh, so we're going to cut it here. I'm going to actually put the game back in the case. Oh, that freezes the whole thing. Hmm. I thought it would just stop the music, but not. The whole game just gets decimated. I'm pretty sure it doesn't do that for the cutscene, for like the the credit cutscene. I'm pretty sure it does something else. I don't know. I know if you, I think it's in Mega Man 8, if you take the disc out during the credits and put another disc in, sometimes it'll play one of the music tracks. I think. I could have just been spewing bullshit. Maybe I'm thinking of a different game. I don't know. Maybe it was Tony Hawk. Hmm. Okay, bye.